today i am going to talk to you about attention what is attention what is the movement of attention and what are the ma- ways and methods of raising our attention keep it in broad ways all right but when i am saying all these things you must know that i am talking to you individually it's not about others always the first thing human beings do is when i am speaking to you you try to find out about whom mata ji speaking this is the best way of putting your attention onto something else if you put your attention to yourself that this is for me and me and me alone then it will have an effect because these are mantras and that's why it is wasted because whatever is given to you is thrown on to another person so the attention that you have is the only way to know the reality your own attention is important not the attention of others or your attention on others this must be clearly understood if you understand this point that the whole thing is to be consumed by you through your attention to raise yourself to a higher situation it will work out otherwise it is like giving food to you and going to another person who is getting nourished while you are getting nothing and that person also may not be able to get nourished because he doesn't know that you are throwing it to that person so today as i am going to speak to you about attention you should know that your attention should absorb all that i am saying it is not meant for anybody else you better sit in thoughtless awareness as the best way so that it goes into you otherwise it's like a lecture you know that you listen to me has no effect every lecture will transform you because after all i am speaking but because you always think of others and you think of your problems all the time something nonsensical is going on about which you are worried and the attention is so overloaded that whatever is said to you doesn't go into you so just now utilize it by being attentive and knowing that all these nonsensical things have no value is your attention that has to come up and has to grow so attention is the whole of the canvas of your being is a complete canvas is that it complete canvas of your being is the attention how much you have gone into it how much you have discovered it how far you have raised is is a different point attention is chit and god is attention how far your attention has been enlightened is a different point but your attention is god if you become enlightened to that extent <coughs> it is like a canvas you can say it is like a canvas which is spread out for a film and there were aptitudes or you can say the drags or movements of your attention has shows on that canvas i don't know what is the word for vritti in english language it's not aptitude but a person gets prone to or his attention is dragged to i don't know there's a word like that for in english language vritti can you suggest any word so our attention 
is just a pure, completely pure canvas and is acted upon by the three gunas we have to begin with. And the three gunas come to you, as you know, one from your past, one from your future sense and one from the present. Now whatever have been your experiences about a particular thing or a particular occasion, so far is completely recorded in your memory. For example, if you see the black color, all that goes with the black color is recorded in your memory. As soon as you see this black color, quite a lot of it comes up. That means as soon as you see this with your attention, the attention gets muddled up or you can say the attention gets colored with all the memories about this black color. And then your action takes place according to the way your attention is affected. For example, just now something was burned by these flames. Now all of you became aware of it. Next time when you, whenever you will see a flame, first thing will happen will be that you will be cautious about it. It is not going to happen again but the whole memory will come to you and you will try to be cautious or uh, warn others because your attention will become aware of that as soon as you will see that because that canvas of your attention itself will start throwing out these pictures out of itself through your past experiences onto the canvas. This is a living canvas. <coughs> or maybe that if you have got some ideas which you have premeditated or thought of, of the future. For example, you must have thought of somebody that if I meet that man, I will tell him like this. As soon as you will meet that man, your attention will start bubbling out with those ideas that are coming about this man and you will start addressing to him accordingly. It's all stored up within you, whether it is about the future or about the past, is given out of the attention through that bubbling process which depends on your dragging nature. Where are you dragged? That's called as vritti, but I don't know what you call it in English language, I don't know what is the, what you are prone to. Vritti is a very neutral word, it doesn't mean anything bad. It means where you are drawn to. Vritti means a temperament by which you are drawn to. Now whatever is your temperament, it acts like that. For example, if you see a man walking, say, blindly, he cannot see things. One person may get angry with that person, another may have pity for that person, third may come forward to help him out. Is the vritti, is the temperament that you have developed through your tri trigunas. That's why this attention becomes identified with you. And when you are identified with this, your vritti, your temperaments, then you are still in a misidentified area. Let us take a case of somebody who has been possessed before. Now coming to Sahaja Yoga, his possession goes away. 
but the memory remains in the brain that he was possessed. <coughs> and the memory is stronger in a person, left side is stronger. Then that memory lingers on. And as soon as that person comes in contact with anyone which has got something to do with the past possession, it clicks. And the whole thing starts coming into you, bubbling out, and you think you are again possessed. It is the memory which gives you, it's a myth. It's the memory that tells you, oh, you are again possessed. Because your left side is weak, means you always live in your memory. Your memory is stronger than yourself. If you could make yourself stronger than your memory, nothing can possess you. But after you get your Realization, you are not still identified with that state of mind in which you see your ego and superego as myths. Still you get caught up into your ego and superego. And that's why your attention is still in a mess. In a pure, simple way of attention in an innocent child, He sees everything in pratyaksha, means in actual experiencing of something for a child, because he has no memory. So he will have to burn his hand to feel that this burns. He has to touch something cold to know that it is cold, so his memory is not yet built. So into the actual experiencing of it, He lives. But that actual experiencing becomes memory. And once the memory is built up stronger, the whole personality is affected by memory. All the conditioning of all kinds come through that. Your reading, even the whole atmosphere can come to you. You see, sometimes you smell a particular soap. Or say a rose, you smell it. And all the memories of smelling such a rose sometimes comes to you and you may feel really elated sometimes, maybe sometimes very unhappy, whatever may be the situation. So you may feel happy or unhappy because whatever experiences you have had has given you a memory. This memory might have given you a superego or might have given you a ego. This scanning might have taken place. If it has been a ego and a superego, then maybe that if it was ego, you must have felt happy. If it is satisfying to your ego, you feel very happy. If it is not, if it is superego, if you are suppressed by this, then you feel very unhappy. So both things like happiness or un unhappiness are the states where you are still in the myth, still the myth exists. You have to still go beyond. So if you feel happy about some situation, you should know you are only happy before Realization because it is giving some support to your ego to bloat. And if you are unhappy, then you should know that there is some sort of a separation on your ego and there is a superego developing. So both the situations have been of no help to you, of no help to you for your growth, except that both these institutions develop so much that you are away from the real experience. The real experiencing stops because your attention is so much muddled up. So on one side if you move, on the left hand side, your attention is muddled up with fear, 
with pain, with unhappiness, with hopelessness, dejection. The other side, if you indulge too much onto the right hand side, little bit also, you start getting elated, excited, over dominating. The color of the left side is blue, and the blue color starts changing to the black. While on the right hand side, it is to begin with yellow, light yellow, or you can say golden, then yellow, then orange, and then red. So you go to aggression on the right hand side. On the left hand side, you go into a complete state of entropy, you can call it, or a state where you are separated from yourself into complete frozen state. So one side you become completely frozen, on the other side you become completely heated up. Both these things are again movement on the wrong direction. Even in the center when the attention is kept, that you keep your attention more in the center. There also, because it's a very sensitive point, it doesn't stay there. For example, when we say use fire, we can use it for burning the house. In the same way we can use it for creating smoke. But we can also use this fire in its proper way, if we use it in its proper proportion for cooking the food, for giving us light. If it is too much, it can burn like a big fire. If it is too little, it can burn like smoke. But in the center, when you know how to balance it, then you can use it for your own purpose, for cooking or for giving light, and then for a puja too. So in the same way, when we really balance our gunas properly, then we become gradually the master of the whole situation. attention doesn't get dragged into things that we have been doing or that we have understood through our memories or through our experiences or whatever it is, and is not also dragged towards too much on the right-hand side that we try to overpower or try to dominate someone. Because if you move too much that side, you have seen, it becomes blood. It is difficult for people to understand how, when people become very religious minded, like now Iran, the movement is on the right, all the austerities, all that, everything, now bloodshed. Christians also did the same, Brahmins did the same in India, Buddhists did the same, even they talked of non-violence, they got to bloodshed because movement started right hand side. Left hand side movement will take you to very sly and dark methods. So right handed sided people like big nations who are supposed to be developed nations, they justify war. We must have weapons to face each other, but you all each other are the same people from God's point of view. Why are you fighting? I mean, God asks you, why are you fighting? What is the need? Why don't you sit down properly and listen to each other? What are you fighting about? You are fighting about land. Is it your father's land? It belongs to God. God has created this land. Why are you fighting? But your attention is such that immediately you say, oh, this is my land, this is my mother land, this is my father land, this is my brother land. But what about your land which is within you? It's not your own. 
So if you go on telling these people that we should have no war, they will not listen. Realization is the only way. By realization, your attention gets higher and gets separated from that strata from where these things bubble in. You understand my point now? The strata goes higher, the attention goes higher at a higher state, and these things that used to bring in by right side movement, you get big shape, confusion. First, you get confusion. Every intellectual, whatever brilliant he may be, he is confused. And the more confused here, the more he, he, he asserts himself. Because he is confused, he is not sure of himself, so he asserts. This is the thing, this is the thing. I mean, if it is so, why should you assert it? But he goes on asserting, this is the thing. Then understand, now he is going towards lunatic asylum. Absolutely. And the way he asserts, goes on talking about it all the time. That means he is not sure. He becomes like a possessed personality. When he explains everything through his brains, that this is the thing, this is correct, we must all do, this is what. And he convinces many others who are confused like him. They depend on him, he becomes a leader because, you see, they are much more confused and they find somebody who is not so much confused outwardly, they stick on to him and all of them get to war or some sort of a bloodshed or some sort of they want to see blood. They become heartless, passionless, compassionless, we can say, compassionless, loveless people. The other movement is the blue side, is the blue is the like the blue moonlight, so for the romanticism starts, you see. Sitting in the moonlight, you see, <laughs> The ideas start coming from Lord Byron. <laughs> and they come into your, in your attention. Then they be, it becomes very strong passion with you. You think, oh, I'm still, you see, I have to find out my loves, you see, and you go on in search of your loves and this and These things do not really are giving joy. They. That's why so many poems have been written that love is the most painful thing, is worse than death. And all sorts of poems are written like that. So why did you get into it? I mean, it's already written down, books after books, still why do you get into it? You are already warned about it that don't go after love. Love is deception, love is this, that, it is very temporary, it is for the little while you get that. By chance, if somebody could stop at a point by marrying somebody who is sweet enough and realize that love and marriage and all these things are in the center, are like the fire in the kitchen, are like the fire in the temple looks after it and doesn't overdo something about it, then maybe that, this may be utilized. In the same way, the right side movement of the sun line, if people think that, yes, the sun is important, we have to have sun in the house, but you are not to become naked and insult the sun and get your skin cancer, Sun is not for your skin cancer, but if you overdo it, also it is dangerous. A person who exposes himself too much to planning and doing that and doing this and doing all this can land up into very great difficulties. So you have to balance that side also and this side and you have to be in the center, in the equilibrium. Now, this word equilibrium doesn't exist in our day-to-day -day life. It exists only in the fiction or maybe in the so-called scientific research. But as far as human beings are concerned, they do not know what is equilibrium is. Because of this, the attention, though after realization comes up, still on the sides they just go down, this side or that side, 
according to your vrittis and when these identifications still act in them they are prone to go down again in their attention and again start bubbling out the same thing as they had now <coughs> one has to become lighter in one's own mind and should think that we have dropped all that now why are we there one should become lighter with all that load flowing out because you are here to raise your attention higher and higher so that you come up to a point where you become one with the attention of god already your attention is sparkled because through your attention you can see what's wrong with you you can see what's wrong with others and you can see how far you are going with yourself but the progress is retarded because you do not know that this attention is pure form and all that you get into this attention is a mythical stuff is a myth if you drop this myth gradually treat everything as a myth and not depend on becoming unhappy or happy just seeing the thing your attention will take a flight and it will be at a much higher level residing there instead of that every moment you go this way or that way you see it goes on like that and the movement upward is much less even in sattva guna when you rise you can go much worse in that condition also for example if you say that i am trying to be sattva guni in sattva guni it is that you start seeing everything discriminating through your understanding not through vibrations through understanding oh should we not some or other take out our attention from here should we not give up this should we be charitable should we go and serve the people uh, there are people who think oh we are we are going to do something great like your salvation army see let them be salvaged by themselves i don't know what salvation they are going to be so these ideas ideas i am saying of sattva guna can also immobilize you and can really freeze you down once for all and that also can work in you in such a sly manner or we can say in a such a secretive manner that you won't feel it. all these ideas of helping others being charitable let's have a charity association finished once you work in the charity association your attention is finished but if your attention goes higher say my attention is i am only nothing but charity i mean what am i it just flows you just become the charity so the difference between a person who is a realized and a not realized is this that the attention which was giving myth as reality to you is gone now is gone higher it can see that it is myth attention can clearly see that it is myth and you can see that yourself and you can remove yourself that of course i have to give you a push no doubt and i am working hard on that to give you a push but you should also know that mythical things must be dropped out otherwise you will not grow all mythical things must be dropped out and the best way to do it is to be in thoughtless awareness because as soon as you transcend these three gunas you become thoughtless aware you have to cross agya once you cross agya these three gunas absolutely you go into a state where you are gunatit you are beyond gunas so you do not deliberately do anything but it just works out 
But analysis is one of the diseases of the West. What are you analyzing? What are you analyzing? You ask yourself. I feel like laughing at the whole analysis that goes on. <laughs> See, they'll sit down, take out a hair, splitting the hair into hundred, and great analyzers are sitting down there. They cannot even say how the chromosomes have that spindle action. And I mean, at that minute level, the things are worked out. They cannot say how a cell divides. What are they analyzing sitting down here? Now they have analyzed for a purpose, also done for God. Through their analysis, now my things are recorded. Through their analysis, I can go to the TV if they allow me any time. Because of analysis doesn't fit into me, they won't allow, they may not. It might be expedited. But say, for example, if you had not discovered these things, for example, take it like that, and the science was not discovered, your attention would have been at least better off. Because of science, your attention is also very much in confusion. So I don't know which one to praise, whether the science or the primitiveness. See, when you raised yourself to science also, you got to another extreme as usual. Till you burnt out your complete attention, you were not satisfied. I mean, if you had kept your balance in science also, it would have helped, but the balance was lost there. Give anything to human beings and they know how to make <laughs> the worse out of it. They will go to the extreme. You give them a horse, they cannot go ordinary trotting or galloping. They must have a double gallop till they fall and die. Everything, you see, they just are on the run all the time. So first thing is needed is to steady down. And tell yourself that now all these mythical things I am not going to allow to come to my attention. All these things are j nothing but myths, but you are giving too much importance to myths. You are taking them bit so seriously. They are just mythical. Now, I mean, when you are realized, now you laugh at people who just go mad over, a, say, a moonlit night. All right? But ask the fellow who is doing that. He'll say, you are heartless, you have no feelings. <laughs> He'll give you a big poetry out of it. You go and see any one of these people who are riding a high horse, who are at the helm of affairs, and you will feel like laughing at them. But they will think that you are useless, you are doing no work, you are good for nothing, you are just wasters. So now for you, because you are enlightened now, is to understand that our attention has to move higher and higher, at a higher space. Now actually what has happened in Realization? Your Kundalini has risen and has come up. Just like you can say a small thin hair, one hair. And that has broken your sastra. And now the grace is flowing into you. But it's a very small movement that has taken place, of course, which is a very difficult movement, no doubt, but it has taken place. Now, you have not expanded like this. Your chakras are only pierced in the center. But the rest of the attention is still intact. Actually, it is so intact that you don't even feel that it is pierced. Now you have to expand that, open it out, so that more strands of Kundalini can rise. And your attention, which is in these centers, expands. By expansion, it drives out all that is mythical on the sides. On every center, 
we have our attention which is being enlightened in the center through this light passing through but light is too small for the darkness that you have collected especially for people of the west i would say your confusions you must get rid of them but still you identify because if i ask you anything how are you means what means you are still confused all right confusion should go one confusion was there that this is realization or not i hope that's over now with you people at least now you believe it is self realization i have to tell people no i are self realized now you are still they would jump up like jack in the box you see they say no we are not mother how do you say this is realization we expect this out of realization that out of realization that will be flying out of the door if you are realized or something nonsensical like that. thank god these ideas have gone away but when we are realized there is light that has come in us we have to grow it only by separating our attention from the myths is all mythical i also play with you because unless and until you are sure i am not going to give you a wrong idea about yourself i want to see how far still your attention is moving and i know still you are not sure still you are not sure of yourself that's why the confidence is not there first of all you have to learn how to drive then you are tested there will be five stones put together the distance will be only that hardly a car can pass through and the fellow will say you bring it zigzag and you cannot do it why that's how he makes you a master the mastery of your attention will come when you will start seeing that it is all a myth that upsets you it's all a myth that upsets you just throw it away just throw it away and understand that you are the eternal attention that you are the eternal life that only thing that keeps you away from it is ignorance and the ignorance is too simple to understand that you have accepted myth as truth just drop it it's all myth you'll be amazed how your attention will rise and you'll see all these nonsensical things which used to frighten you or to elate you will drop out and you just smile at it and then only you are going to enjoy yourself fully because your attention will be completely drenched into the bliss of self i'm saying you will i say you are already drenched into that bliss keep it up now how to do it actually in every day to day life how to kill the memory of the past to kill the memory of the past is to have new memories you must remember when you got your first realization always think of it whenever any such memory comes to you 
you try to think how you got your realization any memory that is troublesome or even so called elating you just try to remember how realization has come to you when you feel aggressive about something or angry something just try to remember how you felt the joy of surrendering just think of that joy of surrendering of dissolving in yourself so the new memories must be built up if you start building up new memories then you will start collecting moments to establish a other moments which have such memories like a memory when you try to help somebody you raise the kundalini of someone now the problem would be when you will be raising the kundalini of others you will be in thoughtless awareness there won't be any thought and thought is the only thing which impresses but that time you can record the joy of raising the kundalini <coughs> if you could record the joy of raising the kundalini of others you will feel a new wealth of these beautiful moments will be accumulated and all those moments which were giving you confusion or fear or so called unhappiness and happiness will drop and pure joy will it because now most of the experiences you have had are more of joy joy has no thoughts it's just a, just an experience pratyaksha that's why i said you keep your eyes open i hope you will understand what i mean May God bless you. I think let us meditate today. Maybe this meditation will help us. Please close your eyes. All of you, your uh, these things. Put it on the fire. There, Douglas. take these two these things and take them on the fire for paying attention here or there or without worry worry and all these things are vikshepasis are all confusion comes from confusion you have known about me that i can sit for 9 hours in one pose i mean i've done that but i can do even more and so one has to develop a baithak is to sitting posture for some time you must settle down in some position all right should try to do that and whatever is required for that is to be done because that's the only way you can do it if you are walking still your attention will be see moving about anyway if there's a movement then the time space and everything comes into play but if you can settle down if you can have a place where you can sit down and that's why the photograph helps if you can see the photograph continuously with a relaxed eyes not all the time staring but relaxed eyes you can close your eyes with respect again you can open your eyes the settling down of the position see will you'll be surprised how your attention will gradually rise you'll feel it. Just now you are all in thoughtless awareness of going to meditation. All right. Now, if you cannot sit, you can take a seat. You see, down below. But as I said, his clothes should be little lighter. All right. Put your hands towards me. As you have to sit for about now five minutes. I will not make you much, but I hope you'll develop next time. You are sitting this thing.
expression less. This is an expression on the view of the face. This expression is lost. Right hand on the heart, I think we have right hand on the heart. Now do it with your heart. Do it with your heart. Right hand on the heart. This time when you hold your breath, you should know that I am the mother of the universe and the most powerful personality. And I am your mother and you are all protected. Hold your breath. Ah, David. Have some music and something. Now, any questions? Anywhere? Hmm? Um, can you explain the difference between joy and happiness? Joy and? Joy and happiness. Oh, very simple, you know. Joy doesn't have a double thing like happiness and unhappiness. Joy is sin- absolute. Is absolute. It is thoughtless. It's fulfillment. Happiness is always shadowed by unhappiness. It's the double coin stuff, see, double faces of a coin. Happiness will be followed by unhappiness, unhappiness by happiness. It's a related terminology. But joy is absolute, absolute. It's beyond thought. It's bliss. Contentment can be relative still. But it's all that in one. Joy is where you do not ask anything anymore, just there. 
it just emits that. Just emits. You don't want anything, it just goes, overflowing. It has nothing to do with your rationality. It cannot be perceived through your rationality. Beyond, you just feel it. Hmm. Yes, Jeremy? Huh? What makes us dream? Dreams. Now, you see, dreams are, there are three stages of our consciousness in the normal way, not the fourth one that now you are in the fourth one, but normally there are three stages. And the third stage is called as Sushupti, where you are in a stage where you are deep asleep, you see. That time you come in contact with the unconscious. Unconscious actually enters your attention and you start getting the information from that. But a person who is not yet realized is not quite awake in that state, in the sense that whatever he records gets again clouded when he is coming back through those stages of… he comes through subconscious areas, you see, lots of areas, you can say that he comes out of all the subconscious areas that he has got within him and the supraconscious areas within him, and then he comes to conscious mind. So lots of things cloud it, you see, like covered it. So the interpretation or even the memory of the dream could be quite confused, you see. But after realization, you touch even deeper because you enter into unconscious. Not that the unconscious has to do anything, but you enter into the unconscious. Your attention goes into the attention and it records what it sees. The more you become realized, you see, the dream state will go away. For example, I never dream. I mean, actually, I am in dream. I never dream in the sense that when I am so-called dreaming, I am actually there working it out. And I can verify it with others that I was that time with you. He says, yes, this happened. So, you see, it's a different state of mind. But actually this happens, you never, never have a dream, you are always in reality. But that's a different thing, but at least Whatever you record in that, from the unconscious, at least should be your own. But mostly the dreams of the people are clouded, so the dream doesn't have much meaning. But with, uh, with Sahaja Yoga you are, you are enlightened so much that in your dreams also you see what unconscious has to say actually, which is not confused, which is not clouded, which is absolutely with that you are awakened. I mean, for example, you might see me many times in dreams and suggestions will get from me. I mean, I work through dreams only, uh, through, through the unconscious, but some people always will say, Oh, I've seen you somewhere. I've seen you many times. I don't know where have I seen you. Where are you in New York? I said, No. Then where did I see you? I s they saw me in their sleep, you see, but they, they cannot connect that it was in the sleep they had seen. They're not realized people, but they have seen. I cannot, I do not want to even give a realization to people when they are not facing me, either my photograph or Sahaja Yogis. That should not be, because recognition is the only point in Sahaja Yoga. Modern Sahaja Yoga is only going to work out if you recognize me. If you do not recognize me, it's not going to work out. This is the only way, this is the only key, because so far you have never recognized. Only on recognition all your past things will be forgiven, everything will be done. But if you refuse to recognize Me or you go slow with it, your progress will be slow, which I have told you very frankly, though it's rather embarrassing job, but I have to tell you, this is a fact. So in dream you cannot give realization. But in dream you might see the situation in which you will be giving thing, how you should give, your solutions will be suggested to you, how to approach a particular person. But you cannot give realization to anyone. They have to know that they have got realization through Mataji, Nirmala, Devi. As it is, when you give them realization, they have no value. If they don't know me, they will have no value.
but i would still suggest that one should not go on analyzing the dreams too much again the same problem will start because i know jung and all these people did that but that was all right at that stage because they were not realized people or they were realized of a very uh, <laughs> confused manner in the sense that they were not sure of themselves but you people do not go on bothering about dreams so much the dreams are coming to you to give you a solution of a problem the unconscious is helping you in dreams for example when i go to india most of them dream that mother is coming i mean it's like acts as what you call television i dreamt of you after the first time i came here big pardon i dreamt of you after the first time i came here after you came here not before but there are people who have come to me because they dreamt about me also now that's a good thing to dream about me means you gone very deep you see the verification comes in. But, um, when i was here you people you had um on the side and you were like <laughs> What happened you felt? Um, I like I I used to suffer from headaches. Ha. Huh. <laughs> See? That's true. That's true. I mean, actually it is done like that. I'll tell you an example, a very concrete example of this one man who used to come to Sahaja Yoga and was very deep into it. One day he was you see some of the Rajneesh's disciples wanted to sort of harm him. So they called him and they said, I will offer you a pan, you see, that we eat and all that. And they really mesmerized him and gave him a pan, he ate the pan and all that. That was after the program, say about ten thirty or so he ate the pan and he went into his subconscious areas and but he was coming to consciousness a little bit and then they took him in the taxi and beat him. But they could not beat. See, he could see that they used to come and beat him, and their hands were held by somebody. He could not feel the beating on him at all. And he used to come to consciousness again, unconscious, and then he became absolutely conscious. You see, he saw them beating him, and they said they were they were getting the pain as if beaten, but he never was never beaten. Up. And then they left him in one place, and they took out his chain, a gold chain, and. A, he had one ring of a real ruby in his fingers they took out all that and they left him in one place somewhere and uh, then he walked all the way from there to his house so i saw all this happening to him and that i was trying to slap back these people and all that i saw all that i was doing it you see so early in the morning i got up at 6 o'clock i telephoned to his house and i said that how is he now his wife said came very late i mean he came really in the morning time about 5 o'clock and uh, now he's sleeping as let him sleep he has had a very bad time last night and he suffered a lot and these rajnish people have troubled him a lot i told her she was quite surprised you see she didn't know all these things when he got up she asked where did you go and then she told all the story about it then he telephoned to me said mother you were there to save me i said all right i told him but i normally i don't tell you, you see but that day i just wanted to find out then she said that i've lost my ring which was given to me by my father and i really feel sad about it so i said all right you'll find it both the things you are going to get it and uh, when he was getting down from the staircase he found a red kind of a bundle lying there and his wife said what is this red bundle lying here for so he picked it up inside was the ring and inside was his chain and he immediately telephoned to me mother i found both the things how did you manage so it can be done so all that was done for them because you see one can work it out it can happen like that but you must know that everything is done through the power of brahma that's the glow of adi shakti it's all done through that the rest is all myth <coughs> if you are not frightened of the myth and if you do not recognize the myth you are about but you still recognize it this is the problem if you are if you are a scientist say is it are you saying you shouldn't continue scientific work or you should 
No, no, no. If you are a scientist, see, you are a scientist. Then what? After realization, what you should do is to bring science and realization together. You can explain science and realization together. You have to explain realization through scientific method. This should be your effort. A new direction, because you have found out that you have realized. You have found out that there is all pervading power. Now, if you can put it in the scientific language, you can talk to them. So that knowledge is not wasted. Supposing you are a geologist, you can explain many things of geology which you have not explained so far through science, through through realization. So you give actually the science its fulfilment itself. There are so many questions they cannot answer. Everything, politics, everything. Why it has failed? What has happened? What is the reason? Everything can be explained through science, uh, through science of Sahaja. Everything. Why it works out? Why it doesn't work out? What's the thing? What is the failure is due to? Everything can be explained. Human behavior, everything. So use your knowledge. to enlighten the knowledge which is covered with ignorance for example see now you have developed fil- films cinemas this that use it for sergio how can you use it for sergio we should try to find out ways and methods supposing you are a dramatist use that pa- drama make a drama on sergio put your mind to that and you can do it for example somebody is doing say a course in journalism then he should use his journalism to propagate such should try to find out in geology also or in any subject whatsoever the light of sahaja yoga which is being missed so far by the scientist by the geologist by the psychologist by everyone because it's all a science which is secluded which is in darkness which has no connection with the whole Now you see here fire is here, all right. Now when I put my hand there, what happens is this fire is enlightened. This power sucks in from you or any one of you who are realized souls. Whatever is there within you, which can be burnt away by fire, and it burns it off. This fire you have analyzed in ignorance, but now you are enlightened. I gave realization in India to some scientists who were working on the agriculture. They started using vibrations for agriculture, and they were surprised that they could produce ten times more yield. I mean, the you can see the difference between. the different types of things that are being produced and they are doing tremendous work on that they'll be publishing papers and things and they are doing that or you can see also how vibrations work on say a, a nucleus of a of an atom they will be acted through mesotones if you see that mesotones will immediately react to it because they are arbitrary and you'll be amazed you can handle them and maneuver them through your vibrations if you see them under my microscope if you want to go into it you can go in. because you see first of all we have to convince these horrible people but else could be and <coughs> give up everything else and just accept it be with it 
we we are curing people without any science with us we are curing mad people without any science after all everything is for the betterment of human beings we are in, improving food problem we are improving even material problem everybody has got better mat- i mean lakshmi tatva is improved in them all these things can be done and scientist can show that science taken to extreme can take to destruction which is not related to the whole if you move in one direction you see a linear movement it just coils back and comes back to you only but if you are related to the whole then you know how to balance it you see otherwise the nose starts growing or the ear starts is malignant the growth of science the modern science is malignant it is malignant even on earth if part of earth starts growing for example on one side the whole balance and equilibrium will be gone of that isn't it when I mean, if you see the nature in its real completeness then you will see there's such a balance existing science is just moves like a blind horse in one direction what is the use then you go to atom and from atom you go to atomic energy and from there to the destruction part but if you have kept to the truth and to the complete then you would not have gone that far all right it's useful it's useful for us use it analysis destroys destroys all our character everything if you start analyzing you yourself you'll be destroyed take yourself as a whole there are people i've known who analyze me also I'm such silly fools i've seen yeah there are it's so fantastic the way human beings go about with their small little brain <laughs> anything they cannot explain in surgery when you have the higher science to discover forget the lower sciences when when you were a frog you are only worried about the well where you lived but now today you are a human being you are worried about other things now you have become a super human being you should be worried about higher sciences what have you achieved through science we can achieve in a second through surgery your material welfare can be in a second we can improve If you get your realization, materially you'll be better off. Most of the people they declare as coma and dead, or lunatic and gone cases. They have not been able to cure any lunatic whatsoever. Once he goes to the lunatic asylum, he just comes as a corpse. He never comes back as a sane person. What your science have achieved so far? I mean, in which way? take to anything political problems anything you try to have political say democracy you have created democracy <laughs> you wanted to have communism it is nothing but killing everyone everything is a tapsitary hello how are you ah uh, look so you come here you come here uh, your daddy has come Where is he? Oh, I see. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Good. Now, any other question? Should we have some music? Bhaga. Bhaga means six things altogether. They are the six attributes of God, and 
Bhagavati is the power of God. That's why she is called as that. Six basic attributes of God. First is innocence. Second is creativity. Third is पालनहार को क्या कहना चाहिए फादरलीनेस यू कैन से बट इज द वन विच नरिशियस वेलफेयर तो नहीं है See the see uh, if you put the the gardener and the mother earth together, then what what is the quality of them? Is nourishment, growth, looking after, and everything called as palanhar. The one in English must be a word somewhere. The patron, patron, but patron doesn't mean all that, isn't it? Husband. Huh? Husbandry, husband is a funny word. <laughs> Something like that. Paternal, huh? Paternal. But it is also maternal. You see. Guardian. Huh? Guardian. Guardian is only in control. See, all these things put together is called as palanhar. The one. Sustenance is also there, but the kindness, the control, the looking after, the weeding out, all the beauties of that, and the enjoyment of seeing your creation, the the growth, one who makes our growth possible. Then he is almighty. Almighty. Nobody is more powerful than him. the most powerful. And he is the encompasser. He encompasses him. He is all pervading, and he knows it. He knows everything. Omni, omnipotent, omniscient. This is Bhagavad. And Bhagavati is the power of God. Without Bhagavati, God has no meaning. He is like moon and moonlight. Like sun and sunlight, you cannot differentiate. They are just one and same. Bhagavad Gita is the same as Shakti. Arjuna is the same as Bhagavad. She is called by many names. One of them is Nirmala. 